Hello everyone, my name is Whistler and welcome back to another episode of my hardcore series. I hope you're all having a good day today. So, for today's episode, I hope to build a sea pickle farm and also to fully decorate this underwater ravine that I flooded with a, with a coral reef, I guess, and perhaps some other things too. I know this ravine looks like it might only be aesthetic, but I actually have a few things planned for it. Now, the reason why I want a sea pickle farm is I don't actually think I have any sea pickles left. <laughs> I used it all with the coral reef surrounding the mega creeper tree, so uh, I'm gonna need to get some more of those. That's easy enough to do though, you just need a little bit of bone meal on a sea pickle that's already on a piece of coral. Like uh, this sea pickle here, there we go. That'll be enough for me to build my farm with. <laughs> you only need one. Now, I actually need a few redstone supplies for this, like comparators, repeaters, that sort of stuff. I'm not actually going to follow a tutorial for this sea pickle farm, I'm going to give my own shot at designing my own. I think I'm going to go for a shifting floor design, probably powered by an etho hopper clock, although I don't know how necessary that is. Perhaps an observer clock would be better, but yeah, that, that's what I plan on doing. Now, I think I want to use slime blocks and honey blocks beneath the coral blocks that I'm going to have in the farm. I think that way I don't have two rows of pistons on either side. And that means that the farm can be slightly smaller, I believe. So, just gotta create a few sticky pistons for this, and we'll grab the slime blocks and uh, some honey blocks as well from uh, the bee farm. Uh, I've got plenty of honey blocks from this over the course of the last year. Well, plenty for two honey producing beehives. The other two are producing honeycomb. <laughs> but yeah, let's kill this enderman. I hate how this place is an enderman trap. I've still gotta spawn proof the surroundings, clearly. <laughs> So I wonder where the best place for this sea pickle farm is. I don't particularly want to have it in the ravine itself, but perhaps like in the walls of the ravine. I think that's what I want to do for the farms that I put down here. But I'm just trying to decide where I would like the sea pickle farm to be. So I don't want it to be in the way of anything else. So I've got to pick my wall well, or I'll live to regret my mistake. <laughs> but I think this wall over here will be good, somewhere around here. So, just gotta make a opening, dig a big hole in the side of this ravine, and we'll build our sea pickle farm here. There we go, the hole has been dug, and we should probably stop this water from flowing, because that's just gonna ruin the redstone, isn't it? <laughs> now, the sea pickles grow on top of coral blocks, and they do it in a 5x5 five five area, but without the corner blocks. So you've got them like this circle of uh, where sea pickles can grow, I guess. Hang on, this 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 circle is off center. I've got to fix that. <laughs> right there we go. So the sea pickles will grow in this area if there is a sea pickle on a coral block growing in the middle. So I've just got to work out a system of um, making a farm that works with that, with a nice shifting floor design, and hopefully that'll get me a lot of sea pickles, enough to completely fill up this ravine. Now for slime blocks and honey blocks, I probably need some glazed terracotta. So yeah, let, let's stick some light blue into these furnaces. They'll go with water, I guess. Uh, just sticking that in. Very cool. So honey blocks and slime blocks don't actually stick together, which means that I can do this with them and I won't be affected at all by the piston push limit. I do like that aspect of honey blocks. <laughs> And then on top of these, I've got to put the, the coral blocks, I guess. So, just get those into my inventory, and we'll just place them down like that. And we'll just f fill up the rest of this thing. And I killed the coral. That was a mistake. Okay, I, sh I should do that later when I fill this thing up with water. <laughs> Oops. My bad. But yes, so this farm is going to be powered by an Etho hopper clock. And they're quite simple to build. You just need a couple of hoppers, a couple of sticky pistons, a couple of comparators, and a redstone block, and a couple of redstone dusts as well. And with that, you just have this really simple uh, block that you can adjust the timing for very easily just from putting different amounts of items inside of the hopper. Like, for example, this button. And then that will just continue to fire for as long as that there are items in there. And then I'm going to have an observer observing that moving piston or that moving redstone block and that's going to be what powers the sea pickle farm. To collect the drops I've created this water stream up here that's going to take everything to the side over here and then that will drop it into another water stream which will take it into a set of hoppers and straight into a double chest. Very simple stuff and then that's the farm pretty much done. Yeah that's pretty good going I guess. Um, I've gotten a dispenser 
looking into sea pickles on top of the coral blocks, and all that needs to do is for that to fire with bone meal, I will hopefully have a good working sea pickle farm. So let's just give this a test. Let's stick the button in here. Um, yeah, that's firing away. It is creating sea pickles for me. I think it's working. I don't know how fast this is. I don't know if this is a... a this probably isn't the most efficient thing in the world. And um, there's air blocks there for me to patch up. Okay. And this is why we test things. <laughs> Just why you're testing. There's always something that you've probably got to fix. Right, I think that's better. Um, I think this farm could probably be more efficient. So I might mess with the timings a little bit and see if I can't make this farm better. Right, I've run out of bone meal. How much can nice stats get me? That's not very much. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to fiddle with the timings a bit because I was expecting to get more sea pickles out of this and we'll see if we can't make this farm more efficient. <laughs> Nine stacks of bone meal for that amount of sea pickles is not very much. But I'm very happy to say that I ha at least have a working sea pickle farm. I have a source and that is good enough for me. I just have to improve it now. <laughs> right, so I guess if I have to mess with the timings a little bit, I want to have... I'm not sure if the dispenser is just firing like a tick too early or something, so I'll try to use repeaters in a way that has the dispenser firing before the pistons fire. And then that should give me a good amount of time to get more sea pickles. Right, let's give this another test, shall we? I've got the button, let's put it in there. And it's working. No, actually it's not working. No sea pickles are being created. I've messed the timing up even more. <laughs> now the dispenser is firing as the pistons fire, so I clearly need to fiddle around with that a little bit. Right, let's take the button out. What? Hang on, why is this still firing? But I've taken the button out, haven't I? It's in my inventory. No, I haven't. Okay. I don't know what happened there. It's like the button ghosted into my inventory, but it wasn't actually there. <laughs> right, I, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I think... I'm just going to fiddle around until it looks like it's working properly. <laughs> right, let's see if this works. Yes, I'm getting sea pickles again. That's good news. It's a bit slower than before, but hopefully it's a lot more efficient. And it does look like that's the case. I'm seeing a lot more sea pickles being created than before. That's for sure. So yeah, let's see how much the full nine stacks of bone meal gets me. Right, let's run out of bone meal. Let's remove the button. No. Oh, it's, it's ghosting again. That's that's a little bit awkward. Okay, right. So I think this farm works well. I've got a little bit of an issue with items phasing through blocks here, unfortunately. I don't know if there's much I can do about that, but that's okay. It's only me using this farm. But yeah, let's see how many sea pickles I've got. Oh, that's nice. That's much better. That's more what I was expecting from this. <laughs> and I've still got plenty in the hoppers too. They've backed up. That's very cool. So that means I should have a very good source of sea pickles for for my underwater ravine. I can fully light the place up like I wanted to. And I guess the only thing that's left is for me to fill up this little entrance here with water because it doesn't make sense for this not to be filled up with water. <laughs> right, and there we go. This is completely flooded. And that means that this farm is 100% done. I just need to decorate this thing at some point. I don't know if I'll do that today though. Might do that another time. Now one of the things I wanted to have access to in that underwater ravine is the creeper farm. Because I don't really have a proper entrance for that. I have to break blocks to gain access to the gunpowder that this farm produces. So I've got to make sure I've gotten my bearings. So but I want the entrance to my creeper farm to be in the direction that I am looking. So let's just work my way down the stairs making sure I don't turn at all. And then in this direction is where I want the farm to be. Okay, okay, that, that, that actually works out pretty well for us. That's where the chests are facing too. But yeah, I've got tons of gunpowder down here and I'm actually hoping to perhaps one day expand on the amount of gunpowder I can store in here. But that's gonna need a lot more hoppers. But I have a ton of gunpowder, that's for sure. It's gonna turn into a lot of TNT at some stage. But yeah, I guess uh, I should probably tunnel in this direction until I break into the underwater ravine. I don't know how far away it's going to be, and I should probably collect any iron that I come across on the way. <laughs> oh, I think I found it. That is smooth sandstone just there, isn't it? Yes! There we go. That's the underwater ravine, and I think... is this at the top? 
Okay, so for the entrance of my creeper farm, I'd quite like it to be lower. I think that works out well for me building more storage from the gunpowder. I think I'd like the entrance to be somewhere around here. I think this is a better location for that. Now, I'm not actually going to build the entrance properly in today's episode because I've got other stuff planned. But I need to know where I want the entrance first so that I don't build something in front of it because that would be awkward. <laughs> But yeah, I think that will turn out well just being there. Now, I wonder what else I should put in this ravine. I think a kelp farm would be good at some stage. I might do that next time and finish off whatever decorating I, I need to do down here. <laughs> but for now, to have two farms and a potential kelp farm as well as a zombie spawner down here, I think this ravine is looking like it's going to have a very functional future, which I'm very happy about. It's not always just about aesthetics. <laughs> Now, I'd quite like to have some sea turtles down in that ravine, and I- oh, hello, Mr. Drowned. Do you fancy dropping your trident? <laughs> um, come on, drop it, drop it, give me a trident. I'd love a fourth. No, okay. Well, well, three is already really lucky in my world, I guess. I don't feel like I've killed that many. Not enough to produce three tridents anyway. How many drowned have I even killed in this world? I've got to find out. I want to know how lucky I am. 148. I think three tridents for that. that. That is very lucky indeed, in my opinion. But yes, I wanted sea turtles in that underwater ravine, because I have a feeling I can get them to swim around permanently down here if their home beach is flooded. They won't have anywhere else to go, and they'll just hang around permanently in this ravine, swimming around. And I'd love to just see that activity down here. They will just surround these with glass, Last to make sure that nothing can get in, including me, and I think that'll turn out well. And there we go, that is the last sea turtle placed. And some of them have already cracked, one of them cracked as soon as I placed it, that was weird. But I think I might actually want another one down here, in this, uh, towards the end of the ravine. So hello sir, please give me another egg. Uh, I can't see it, you're in the way. <laughs> please get out of the way, I need to take the egg. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, he's moved. I can get the egg from here. There we go. And I think, uh, I don't know if I'll need more sea turtles in this world at the moment. So I think it's time for me to set these sea turtles free. They can go out into the big blue yonder and have all of the fun that they want. And there they go. Already swimming off into the ocean. I hope they have a good life. But yeah, with the placement of that last turtle egg, this ravine will now be populated with life. As soon as they hatch, at least. Now I've just got to get the coral reef in here. So yeah, that's going to be the main build project for today. Decorating this ravine with a coral reef. And maybe even something else. Some, like a... I might end up putting a shipwreck down here. I think that would be fun. But yeah, I hope you enjoy that time lapse. Let's go.
welcome back everyone, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. I think this place turned out really well with all of the coral, as well as the nether trees that I've put here and there. I think they've all turned out really well. This place definitely looks a lot more biologically active now that I've done all of this. It's not just a bland ravine anymore. So I've actually built this shipwreck just here, and I did try to build a shipwreck in a creative test world, but I just, I've never built one before and it just didn't look that great. So what I've done is I built one of the default ones and then tried to build it comparing with screenshots from the Minecraft wiki. And uh, I think this turned out pretty well. I've added a couple of changes. Some of them are probably noticeable, others probably not so much. Some of them are just mistakes on my part. But yeah, I think this place turns out pretty well with the shipwreck. Although don't ask how this thing got here. It's probably got something to do with this drowned over here, wherever he is. Oh, there he is. Perhaps this guy, he's, he was probably the captain. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> but yeah, I think I would like to see what this place looks like without the conduit effect. I just want to see how it fares with the sea pickles that I've placed here and whether it lights up the ravine properly. And then I'll work out whether I want to have like my own lighting or just conduit or just the conduit in general. So I've removed the conduit underneath the creeper tree because I can access that from the ravine here as well. And yeah, I think this ravine is looking a lot darker. It's a lot more blue. In normal times, I think I would like to have the conduit effects because I do want to be flying through here with an elytra at some stage. And I think it would just be better if I could see my way through this ravine so I, I can dodge any obstacles that I've built. Because there are a couple of obstacles barring the path going straight through the ravine. It's not very simple. There are things you need to dodge and at full speed too because so you'll be using rockets to get through the water. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'll just replace that conduit for now. I think I prefer the lighting that it gives. But yeah, let's see what this is like trying to fly through the ravine. So. To activate your elytra you've got to fly into the water with it activated and then you should just be able to use rockets underwater as much as you like. So now that I've done that I just need to get to the end of this ravine and see what using an elytra is like down here. Okay, I think, this, I think that's pretty good. There's definitely some obstacles for me to dodge. I don't know what the perfect route for that is either so I think that's a that's going to turn out pretty well for a potential future elytra course. That's pretty cool, I've already gotten one aspect of it built and I've not even gone out with that in mind. <laughs> well I guess I have, I've just not gone out to build the elytra course just yet, but to have this section fully built out already, that's uh, pretty good going. It means I don't have to grind as hard later. <laughs> Now, I will be honest with the sea turtles, I let them out of their glass cages when they were babies and I'm not sure if a couple of them suffocated because they are very small and whenever they'd float up beneath the coral blocks they'd start suffocating and I'd hear this awful noise and I don't know if any of them died. I think I saved a couple of them but I don't know how many. Now during that time lapse I also came across the wandering trader and he had some tropical fish. so. I know I lost some tropical fish in an earlier episode when I was doing the other coral reef, but with this one, I hope to make use of the mob pathfinding mechanics. So mobs in this game have a very particular direction that they want to head in, and that is northwest, and that just happens to be the end of this ravine. So hopefully they won't be able to leave. Well, that's the plan anyway. So yeah, let's uh, let's place these fish and see what they look like. Right? Okay. These are looking cool. I think two of them are the same fish actually. But I think I would like to find the four fish that I'd lost in the earlier episode. So I, I don't know where they went, but if they went northwest like I suspect they did, then I might actually be able to find them. So let's try and find four very particular fish in this vast ocean in front of me. <laughs> I wonder how long that's going to take. Oh, I see fish. What What are these? What are these fish? These are cod, I think. Yeah, th these are not the fish I was looking for. <laughs> so somewhere in this ocean, there should be four more tropical fish. So I think I've just got to zoom around the ocean and keep looking for anything that looks like a mob and moves. And I don't know where they are, but I think northwest is definitely my best bet. Oh, here are some fish. What are these guys? This is northwest. These are 
cod and salmon. These are not tropical fish. I need to... Ooh. Are those... Are those tropical fish? I think I've found them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to find them so quickly. I can't believe I've just found four very particular fish that I'd lost in the middle of this vast ocean. And it's not even taken that long. It's, I've only been looking for a couple minutes. Wow. <laughs> How lucky is that? I didn't expect to see these guys ever again. But I guess uh, it's time that I capture these guys and I'll place them in the ravine as well. Well, that was lucky. <laughs> so yeah, that's four more tropical fish for the ravine. And th that should make this place just ever so slightly more lively, which will make me very happy. It's a time to be let loose, my fellas. I hope you enjoy your stay in this place. That's going to have to be the end of the episode though, I'm afraid. So if you enjoyed, then be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. And I guess I'll see you next time. So on that note, bye. Thanks for watching.